Uh, NBC Universal's parent company, Comcast, officially launching its streaming service, Peacock. It happens today for Comcast subscribers. It joins the fray of streamers as many people are hunkered down at home consuming content. Joining us now for a look at what this launch will add to the streaming universe and uh, all of us uh, who are at home watching. Uh, Craig Moffat is the senior analyst at Moffat Nathanson. Uh, good morning to you. Um, morning. Who knew? Only a couple of months ago that uh, so many of these streamers, uh, HBO Max is going to be next on the hit parade. Quibi was last week, uh, would be coming into an environment like this. Uh, you have a lot of people with a lot of time on their hands. Uh, but in this particular instance, you have less advertising uh, dollars available. Uh, what, what, what's your take on, on this, uh, uh, this launch today? Well, you're right, Andrew. It's the best of times and the worst of times for a streaming service, right? I mean, it, on the one hand, we're all home and, and there's a ton of consumption. You see that in the, the data traffic patterns where the peak hours are still at the uh, streaming times. They're 9 p.m. when people are watching entertainment, not, not during the workday. Um, so we're all consuming a ton of entertainment, a ton of cable news. All that bodes really well for Peacock. On the other hand, remember, because Peacock, unlike most of the other streaming services, is going to be ad supported, the real audience for Peacock is advertisers and the advertisers have gone on strike. So it's going to be um, very good for the demand side of Peacock it is the consumer side of Peacock. You'll get lots of viewers. Um, it's going to be a really tough uphill climb to try to get advertisers. But, but to the extent that you can create a habit now, and, and that's, I think, a fundamental question about the culture and what happens to all of us uh, when and if we all, uh, not, I don't want to say if, when we all go back uh, to some semblance of normal. But if you can create the habit now, hopefully on the other side, you'll be able to sell advertising against it, right? That's exactly right. You're trying to get people hooked on the service um, Disney already has 50 million users of, of Disney Plus. Amazon uh, is doing the same thing. Um, they're all seeing tremendous usage right now. And the hope is that um, Peacock will be one of those services that comes out the other side of this with, with a large group of committed customers. And eventually, it'll be much easier to sell advertising against that group of customers. What's your metric for success now? given the situation we're in. Yeah, now, now remember, I don't think you can measure a free service um, by quite the same, uh, the same metrics. You can't just measure it by the number of people who are trying it. You're gonna have to stick to um, engagement type of, of metrics and how much time people are spending with the service and how, how much are you getting people truly committed to being regular users. Um, eventually, there's gonna be a shakeout of these services. There's just too many of them. Um, it doesn't mean they will necessarily go away, but some of them are going to have to combine and re-aggregate into packages that are a little more user-friendly to customers. Um, and so what you're really looking for is, um, can they build a, a stable base of committed right. users who come back regularly? And how are you thinking about the, the power of the consumer, if you will, let's say not over the next six months, but really over the next 12 or 18 months, on the other side of this, given I don't know how you're thinking about the timeline, what unemployment looks like and what that's going to do to, to how much money people have in their wallet for these services. It's, it's a great question. And I think in, in, with the investors um, on our client list that, that we're talking to every day, you really have to try to separate. And when you think about stock picks among these companies, what is your view of beta versus what is your view of alpha? Because the beta is going to swamp the alpha in the near term, whether you get the timing right and therefore what you think about the duration of unemployment and, and that sort of thing is going to be the real driver, much more so than which stocks seem relatively undervalued versus others. Um, as we as we think about it, my, my guess is you will see a prolonged period of unemployment. Um, that means almost certainly that cord cutting is going to accelerate, that despite the fact that, that people are consuming a lot of television news, for example, there's, there's no way you're not going to see accelerating cord cutting, particularly because sports are off the air. Um, and those people are going to go somewhere. So you're, the streaming services are going to pick up a lot of users. Um, 
And uh, as I say, eventually that will be to the good of these kinds of services. The real question for Comcast, again, is can you replace with advertising dollars um, the damage that's going to be done to the right. traditional pay TV ecosystem? It's going to be a very tough challenge for, for all of these players that have traditional media businesses. Final question, because we got to run. You have an over-under on Quibi. I don't know if you saw the news yesterday, but they're going to start to make uh, Quibi available, which was supposed to be mobile only, now to TVs. Yeah, look, I, I, I think the jury is still out. Quibi's services, um, the very short-form clips, were designed to be quick consumption on small devices. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how how much people want to to throw that to TVs. There's clearly some research that's telling them that um, that people want to see it on television. So so, but we'll see. It it, it stands to be seen whether that um, really catches fire.